The next step of the process for my low cost is to modify this stock 91 Miata power steering rack. There's two things that need to happen. First, I need to do what they call depowering, which is where you convert a power steering rack to a manual rack. So after the depower, the next thing is shortening the rack. The main thing that creates an issue in this frame is how narrow the front end is. My track width on the on the vehicle is only gonna be three and a half inches narrower than the Miata track width, but I need to take almost five inches out of the steering rack because how narrow the front frame is. So this is where the steering column will come in and there's a tube right behind it. So you need to make sure that angle clears the tube. And once I get everything kind of mocked in where I think it should be, it looks like I need to shorten this five inches. So this steel part of this tube is 12, inch, 12 inches and an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it down to seven inches and an eighth. One of the major things to be concerned about when shortening one of these racks is the style of rack that it is. So on a power steering rack, this center rack shaft is hardened. So a lot of people say, no, they're not hardened. Well, you can see here the heat signature from where they hardened this uh, area in way of the rack, but there's also a, a bushing that runs along this area. So this, this chrome rod is hard on the outside. So um, I haven't really gotten into how hard it is on the inside because basically I have to section five inches off the end of this and then I need to remanufacture this end. I've got to skim the OD, potentially skim the ID, cut the metric thread, and then cut this slot. After disassembly, this is basically what you have. This is a sealing area. You know, this is the two halves of the piston but this is held on with a retained um, wire snap ring. So this has to be cut off. You can't take the snap ring out to remove this. So the first step is to cut this with a cut off wheel. Normally on a hardened ring like this, you're gonna cut it as much as you can without contacting the shaft and then you're going to use a steel punch uh you know a chisel point punch and you're going to hit it with a punch and, I'm, and it just shot off and you're basically using the material's hardness against itself to crack that little leftover material here's the shaft and basically there's been no damage to it at all. You got my shaft chucked up. I got some Prussian blue on here and I've got a small scratch mark. So I'm gonna start the lathe and spin it and then I'll come in with a tool and mark that all the way around. All right, so that was cut off with an electric grinder with the lathe running a little bit. But as you can see, I'll have to bore that out. And this is definitely a hard material. It's been probably 10 years since I cut an internal thread and I've never cut a metric thread so I didn't want to record it because uh, I was trying to give it my full attention but the thread fit came out pretty good. I nicked the end of my tool so the root of the thread wasn't cut in quite as deep as it should have been. So when I threaded in my tie rod it kind of wiped out a little bit of the crown on the thread. Uh, I'm not I don't have enough experience threading to be able to take this tool out and resharpen it and put it back in and get it lined back up again. Uh, I, you know, this is only like the third thread I've ever cut and it's the first internal thread. So for me, this is good enough. So I'm pretty happy with that fit. I could screw it together by hand, but it's but it's tight. So that's a good fit on the thread. Um, I even if I spent the twenty or thirty dollars on a tap, I wouldn't get a fit like that. So I'm pretty happy with that. I still need to come back in and clean up this counter bore. I need to use a chamfer tool because it's peeling that thread. It's peeling that inside thread every time I thread a part onto it, but. I tried to skim this outside diameter like it is on the factory side on the other side, but this this shaft is hard on the outside. I don't have a brace carbide tool that will cut this right now, so um, I'm probably just going to take some paper and polish this out. 
Thanks for watching part one. Uh, in the next part, I'm going to shorten the housing and work on installing the rack. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I've got more low cost videos coming and I'm always doing something welding, fishing.